this issue becomes of big concern, especially with the PDS in mind. Now, the PDS arrangement was very simple. Electricity Company of Ghana collects revenues. And then, for some strange reason, the government decides that another company should collect the revenue. PDS was not going to generate electricity. PDS was not going to provide any transmission facilities or infrastructure, nothing. Just revenue collection. And the arrangement under which PDS contract was done is quite similar to this one. And those are the things that raise concerns for public-spirited, nationally-minded citizens. Now, first of all, all of the illegalities have been established beyond doubt that this is a contract that you couldn't have said should go for sole sourcing. And all the explanations and the conditions under which sole sourcing can be done, whether it is under critical conditions, this is an emergency, this company is the only one that can produce it under very competitive conditions, none of these were met. And yet, you go for a sole sourcing. This company is a nascent company, a company that was just born without any experience, no parliamentary approval, and people in government, including the majority leader, Afinio Marking, is defending this matter. I, I mean, it's very worrying, I tell you. When I read portions of the fourth estate report, investigation on this matter, where the president's own white paper on the report was even quoted, where the president admitted clearly that this contract, there are issues with it, the president still gave some space that the contract may be, you know, cancelled, restructured. Yeah. This and is an government illegal. asking through the Ministry of Finance and GRA yeah. may yeah. terminate. May. With or without cost. You know, this is a very worrying matter because the monies that you are talking about is not... Uh, some Nigerian we say not inconsiderable. <laughs> the, the, the sums we are, not, we are talking about are not inconsiderable, especially considering our current state where we are fighting for IMF bailout. And we are desperate. We can't even find enough money to pay uh, producers of LNG for our power producing companies. The doomsaw that we are experiencing. When I checked, some of the technical people in the field are telling me now that it is about generation. Because for some time we have been told, oh, we, have gener we don't have generational problem. It is just distribution. It is just now my information is that Talu, for example, has decided that they will not give LNG to government on credit anymore. The government is owing. So the government must pay. And they have to bring down the LNG. <laughs> Liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. That government must pay first. And we are hiring a company to pay the monies that, first of all, we don't have. Two, to perform a function that already NPA and GRA are performing, even if there are issues. So couldn't you use some of this revenue that is coming to help NPA and GRA to improve their own systems mm -hmm. such that you don't set up a company that is turning out to be quite dubious? In, in the eyes of many people, the, the, the way this whole process has been rushed, the way parliamentary approvals have been avoided, the way procurement laws have been flouted, the way the whole enterprise has been shrouded in such suspicions. Why should we put ourselves into this? Why should the government insist? Why should majority leader be defending such a matter? When GRA is telling you, when I checked the, the report that Fourth Estate did, they said GRA admitted they don't need SML data to be able to check what revenue they should collect from the petroleum sector. And GRA is on video. Yeah, they said, they said they don't need, they don't need. MPA said, we are already doing this job. So why do you want to take it away from? You want to weaken the state's own institutions 
further. And mind you, the petroleum sector, whether you like it or not, is a highly strategic sector. It's a security sector. So for the government to be handling it as if it's business as usual, we haven't finished talking about PDS. We haven't finished talking about, so, you know, and all. And then the government is insisting. This would embolden the people who would tell you that this current government under President Kufuadu is not interested in fighting corruption, but rather creating avenues for people to make dubious monies. Because if you have a timber company suddenly becoming a revenue assurances company, uh, who, who would be comfortable with that? I think the government has to be very careful. Look, this, when people criticize these matters, when people raise these issues, I don't think they are being political. This has to do with billions of dollars. If in every year, SML is going to take a hundred million dollars minimum mm. for five years, that is 500 million. Renewable, at least another five years. Mm -hmm. That is one billion dollars. And then you are saying that the money that government is giving is not state money. <laughs> so is the business state business is it the government that is awarding the contract or is some private person who is awarding the contract? A private person has not awarded a contract to SML. It is the government. The government, the people in government, don't use their pocket money to construct routes or to pay for projects, public projects. It is the people's money that is used to pay for such public-oriented projects. So I think... The defense of the majority leader, especially, Honorable Fenio Marking, he has to go back mm. and look at what he's trying to defend. Oh, it's just too wrong has been done. The government, no wrong has been done by, 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 by violating procurement laws. No wrong has been done. No wrong has been done by violating parliamentary procedures. No wrong has been done by paying monies for services that GRA says they don't need. You know, sometimes you are not a technical person, but when you hear some of these things and you look at the background information and what is emerging, you ask yourself, the people in government, the people in public offices, are they really interested in doing things that would save us further hardships or that they are looking for opportunities for their friends, themselves, and other people just to make money? That, for me, it makes this deal uh, uh, very smelly. And it is, I would advise the president and the government, pull the brakes all together on this arrangement. Two, whatever monies have already been paid, do a proper value for money audit. It is possible that at the end of the investigation, you might realize that monies that have been paid were unwarranted. Well, Right. And they may have been paid wrongly, and then you retrieve them. Three, if it is the case that GRA and MPA and other allied institutions have any weaknesses in their structures and their infrastructure, their management systems, their data systems, their technologies, and so therefore are not able to perform optimally, the best thing to do, use just a fraction of all these resources to beef them up. Right. After all, if you consolidate the institutions properly and you resource them properly, you don't need a duplication of the same institutions to perform the same functions. That is the problem with the fighting of corruption, where you have all manner of institutions scattered all over the place, and none of them is able to effectively fight corruption. That is the kind of case I'm seeing in this matter. Not a concentrated approach.